All right, this is Yale from bound, AnnapolisBound.com. I just forgot my website name here for a second. And, and uh, I wanted to welcome you to this website personally because uh, I didn't see a lot of websites out there uh, specifically for um, the achievement candidates. Uh, with solid advice uh, coming from legitimate and um, like credible sources and outside of admissions. And I, I wanted to um, start creating content here for those of you interested in going to the US Naval Academy and getting some uh, sound advice so that uh, you don't make any um, bad decisions uh, in, in your application process and save yourself a lot of stress. So um, what I'm going to do for these videos is go through some of the forums out there. You know, back when I was a high schooler, I don't think Reddit was around, but um, that's something I think is a good resource or is, there's a lot of good questions on here and I thought I'd answer them. And there's a few other websites that are frankly a little outdated. I think they were created in like the early 2000s. And, uh, and I think I might go through some of those questions too. It's a, a work in progress. So I'm gonna take a look here and See if I can share my screen. Share screen. Okay, so I'm going to share my web browser here. All right, I think you can see that. So I'm looking at this very uh, basic Reddit forum, and I'm going to look for some good questions here. So. Does the USNA admissions look at freshman grades? My GPA isn't good now. Okay, so why don't we just go through? I think I'll go through these questions maybe a few at a time. So this question here reads, does the USNA admissions look at freshman grades? Um, yeah, I, I, I think this person, or they say it right here, doesn't have um, the grades that they wanted to have in their freshman year. Um, and this person says, I have a B in my biology class in the future I hope to apply to the USNA with the admissions look at my freshman grade. So yes, and I think the real question they're asking is, um, is a B going to hurt my chances? And the answer is no. So it looks like somebody said, a single B isn't bad. I agree with that. Um, you know, but the main thing here uh, with grades is that you want to show the admissions that um, you have a, a passion for something. So whether it be history, um, STEM courses, maybe you have more like of an engineering mindset, you want to show the admissions that you are not randomly constructing your uh, academic plan in high school. And you wanna always communicate you have a purpose. So uh, to whoever asked this question, and I think it's a fair question, um, a B is not gonna hurt your chances of going. And it also doesn't mean that um, you're locked in for having only one B. Uh, myself, I didn't have great grades my freshman year or my sophomore year. Um, and I actually dropped out of high school. And I'll go into that uh, a little bit later as to how I was able to reframe my, my high school career into someone who's um, capable and deserving of a Naval Academy slot. Um, but to whoever answered, asked this question, um, I would ask yourself, um, beyond your grades, do you th think that 
you are communicating to a, an admissions officer that you're challenging yourself and that you are purposefully um, educating yourself so that when you get to the Naval Academy, um, you're not lost and you're not someone that's going to require extra resources and you're going to be someone who's very self-sufficient. So I hope that answers my, your question. You know, these, these would be a lot better. You know, maybe in the future we can have some one-on-ones and do these live, but I thought that was a fair question. Um, Naval Academy Summer Seminar Tips. All right. Well, I actually never went to summer seminar, but I'm just going to go through this anyways. Anyone have any general tips for the 1,000 character limit bio? I am almost done with it, but I just wanted to know if anybody has any knowledge to keep in mind. I basically talk about specific leadership roles, varsity sports, and my school involvement in community. All right, so I never, I actually didn't know about Naval Academy Summer Seminar um, until I got into the application process. And I, I got into it pretty late. I think a lot of applicants find out about the Naval Academy before high school. And I, I was one of the few that got into it in the middle of high school. So I was very late to the Naval Academy um, train, if you, if you will. But uh, just based on um, people that I went to school with and based on general best practices for writing, um, whoever wrote this question, I, I would advise to them that you want to be genuine and you want to be concise. So when when people are reading these, yeah, you got to keep in mind that these are trained readers and they look through thousands of essays and statements and they're looking for one that tells them um, this person knows what they want, this person has a purpose, and this person um, is not afraid to sell themselves as someone who is a capable leader in the fleet. So um, again, it would be more helpful for me to have a one-on-one -on -one with someone to talk about these things. But um, if you're looking at Naval Academy Summer Seminar, just understand that um, you're gonna be exposed in any situation where you have to sell yourself. So be genuine, you, you know, a lot of these these admissions officers or people looking through candidates, they really know when you're bullshitting and they know if you're not sure of what you want. So if if you're not a great writer, I recommend um, taking a writing course. And there's actually a book that I read later in life. I can't remember what it's called, uh, but I read it. I read it in my into my mid twenties, <clears throat> mid to late twenties, and it's something like how to write effectively. I'm gonna have to come back and drop the the name of the book. But there are a lot of great resources out there, whether it be free or it might cost you 20, 30 bucks for a good uh, resource to tell you how to read and write effectively. And if you can do that, you can, you can communicate that you're not a, uh, a person who fluffs things up or um, is, is someone who is a little bit too theatrical in your writing, but someone who's very to the point, direct, and demonstrates an understanding of um, requirements and understands uh, team beyond self which you can communicate indirectly through your writing, um, that will be greatly appreciated. And I think it's also important to acknowledge that if there are any things that on your resume or your application that are red flags, I would address them 
directly and not try to sugarcoat anything or try to um, pretend like it doesn't exist because that will not be appreciated either. Uh, whether it be for the Naval Academy or a very competitive um, application process. All right, um, I'm gonna go through one more here because I can really deep dive in a lot of these. Let's pick, okay, this person asks, what are my chances of getting? Demographics, junior, Hispanic, male, California, all boys, private Catholic high school. Okay, I'm already, I can already tell that this person has their stuff together because all this stuff is laid out very intuitively. And this seems like an organized person that has already looked through some of the requirements and the lay of the land for applying. So um, that's just my hunch, but I'm gonna keep reading here. Grades, I guess they have a 5.0 GPA scale. Where I went to school is a 4.0. There's no way you can have over a four. Um, obvious improvement over the years. So they understand the importance of continuous improvement. Um, looks like they're taking some challenging courses. They, they're bilingual, extracurriculars, also important varsity football, varsity across, president. Okay, so this looks like a great applicant. They, they have leadership roles, they're athletic, involved in um, kind of philanthropic, philanthropic activities like Big Brother, uh, volunteer tutor, actively training for CFA. I don't know what that is. Good connection. Okay, great. Good connection with my congressional rep. This is something that a lot of people I think are not um, privy to or really don't like talking about because it, it seems kind of like politicky, but um, it is important to have a good relationship with your congressman or woman because they're the ones that are going to be writing your letter of recommendation. So um, I would highly recommend that you find a way to get in touch with your congressman or woman because the more they vouch for you, the more um, the admit the admissions office is going to give you credibility in terms of um, your application. Because um, after all, you know, they are the ones that decide, they, they give you kind of the final okay for applicants. You know, if you don't have a uh, endorsement from a member of Congress or Senate, um, you, you can't go. So it really uh, is an important part of the process. Um, I'm open to any military academy. And if I don't get into academy, I will do ROTC. This is another detail that I appreciate because this per this is telling me that this person isn't just going for the accolades, but they're committed to um, some type of military experience. And that says a lot about this person. And I think in the application process, they do ask you where else you're applying. Uh, no tardies, no detentions. Uh, you know what? That's great, but I don't think it really matters because I know people who are kind of troublemakers in high school that, um, and at the Naval Academy that um, did just fine. So overall, looking at this um, profile, if I had to give them like a evaluation for chances of getting in on a one to 10 scale, just based on this, as as long as there's no red flags that they excluded, I, I think they have a pretty high chance. I'd say over an eight out of 10. Um, of course, there's a lot of other things they need to wrap up and um, present nicely. Um, that, that includes interviews, their essay, uh, their statement, and, um, really how they frame themselves as a potential midshipman, because really what you want to do is communicate value to the admissions office. 
because there's a lot of people, um, and, and if you're listening to this and you're like this candidate, um, don't take this the wrong way. It's, it's not a bad thing that, that if you find yourself um, being able to relate to this person, but there's a lot of people like this. So um, the key to really like making your thing stand out is, is creating a story that tells them you did all of these things for a reason. And if I were you, I will get well versed on where the, the Navy is headed and go beyond um, news articles that you see on CNN or Fox or any of these major news outlets. I would say do some real research and, you know, find a service member that's active duty and ask him, you know, what, what are you guys doing now? And if you're, if you're even more fortunate, you know, talk to a leader in the military. You can find an officer and tell them what you're about and ask them, you know, what, what is their number one priority right now? And what are some of the key things for them to succeed um, in accomplishing or achieving mission accomplishment? Um, that will resonate in your essay if you show that you've done research. So let's see, we might have time for one more. They do need to go to the gym. Oh, what to get a plea for Christmas, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is an interesting one. This is for someone currently at the Naval Academy. I'm just gonna read this because it's interesting because uh, I feel bad for this person already. Second class midshipman in need of advice. I'm getting med dropped and I have nowhere to go. Lost in need, in, in need of direction. Also getting medically separated for two incurable diseases. That's terrible. Although the diseases are not immediately life-threatening. Yeah, I went to school with someone like this. They ended up getting, what was it? It was some disease that put them in a wheelchair. And I think it was their first year they... They literally went up the ramp in a wheelchair. I, I don't know if they ended up doing something um, like a restricted line, as they call it, but you know these things happen. A little about me, my SAT, so I've got a SAT score. Uh, decent, not great. You want to get over a 1300, that's really important. For my extra curriculum. Oh, private pop. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of students. That, if you have the resources, this is a really good thing to do is get your private pilot's license. Brazilian blue belt and Brazilian jiu jitsu. All right, so this person sounds depressed, but I'm going to say that whoever this is, you'll be just fine. Um, I would, you know, the Naval Academy, one of the great things is, you know, whether you're a graduate or um, applying or a current midshipman, there's a lot of alumni that are willing to give you their time and give you advice as to what to do. So to whoever this is, um, what should you do? I would make a plan and be very honest with yourself about what you want. Um, I assume you went to the Naval Academy because you wanted to be a Naval officer or Marine Corps officer. And if that's no longer an option for you, um, I would find something else that compels you. It sounds kind of obvious, but um, sometimes it's the, the truth is a very tough pill to swallow. Where should you go? Nobody can tell you that. I mean, that's up to you. Um, I think that if you were attracted to something because of the danger aspect of joining the military or seeing some type of frontline action or just the idea, the romantic idea of warfare, I would find a field where rigor is um, a pretty common characteristic of the field. And there's a lot of business people out there that you know, can tell you that their line of work is like war. And business is a great example. Um, it's not the same thing, but 
you know, a lot of Naval Academy graduates do go into business because and do well because a lot of those um, skills and characteristics of good war fighters translate into things like sales, uh, business management, consulting, and all these high stress jobs. Um, yeah, so that's it. You know, whoever this is, I'm sorry to hear that you're uh, not doing great, but you will be fine. You're very young. There's no way you're over. You know, if you're a second class midshipman, you're probably at the most 24 years old. You're just getting started. Um, I would prioritize your health and find something else that compels you. It sucks that you can't graduate from a Naval Academy because that's obviously something you work very hard for, but um, it's not the most important thing. And it's really not the most or only thing out there that is um, worth doing. There's so many other things and um, I hope you find whatever it is that moves you. So I'm gonna stop here. I do need to go to the gym and train. So stop, share. All right, so uh, I think it's been uh, at least 30 minutes or so. And this is the first video in uh, kind of Q&A on annapolisbound.com. Uh, tune in again for more uh, Q&A sessions. And if you have questions, be sure to leave them in the comments or email them to me. And uh, by the time you see this on YouTube, be sure to click uh, like and subscribe so I can continue to devote more time to this um, content uh, outlet and provide lots and lots of good advice to those applying to or uh, currently enrolled at the Naval Academy. That's it, and I'll see you later. This is Yale.